Hello and welcome to the first lecture of this new section. In this lecture, we will go through the high-level journey for creating a Pro account and we'll add the credit card information to the sign up form when users select a Pro account subscription. This journey requires us to interact with the Stripe Java API. When users choose to subscribe for a Pro account, they will go through an enriched journey compared to those who selected the basic account. First, since a Pro account requires a monthly subscription of $10, we will need to ask users their credit card information. Then, in a nutshell, we will send this information to Stripe, which will return a Stripe customer ID if the information is valid. It's important at this point to remember that we should never store credit card information in our database. We can store a Stripe user ID because without the Stripe keys, it's not possible to do anything with this ID. The application will then store the Stripe customer ID in the user's record and invoke the Stripe API to subscribe the user to the monthly plan, which in our setup we have set having the ID value equal to two. We will start by creating a new feature branch called Stripe. First, we will ensure that we are pointing at the develop branch with the git command git checkout develop. Then, we will create a new Stripe feature branch with the git commands git checkout minus b Stripe, git push minus u origin Stripe. First, we will add few credit card form fields to the sign up form in case the user selected the pro account. I'm now going to copy the code that I've prepared for this lecture and then I'll talk you through it. Please take your time to pause the video and follow what I'm showing. Here, we are using a timelift thif attribute to compare the request parameter with the string representation of the pro value in the plants and nums enumeration. Please note the construct as it's quite new. We are using the timelift hash strings to string method and then the same construct that we have used in the form declaration for the th object. Note that we have to use the strings method or the return value will be false since pro get id returns an integer. We then declare four additional form fields, the card number, the card code, the card month and the card year. Notice how we have hard coded the month values as they never change and the year values as, as they don't change often. We could have come up with something more sophisticated, of course, such as a map of values that Timeleaf could have displayed dynamically through a loop. But you get the idea. If you are looking at this video in 2017, you can always remove the 2016 value or write your own for loop to have things displayed dynamically. If we restart the application now and click on the Pro subscription, we should see the additional fields in action. Now, we need to add validation for the credit card form fields in the form validation code that we have written for the basic form. We can open the DevOps bad DJS file and add the fields validation there. I'm now going to copy the validation for the card fields that I've prepared for this lecture and then I'll talk you through it. Here, I've added validation for the card number and card code. The month and year, since they've been hard-coded, are supposed to be valid. Notice how for the card number form field we have used the credit card validator and for the card code we have used the card code validator. Also, this validation requires a value for these two fields only if they have been added to the form, that is only for the pro account journey. The last thing we'll do is to add an extra check in the sign up controller for when users select the pro account. This is to protect the application from calls to the sign up post method programmatically while providing null or empty credit card values for a pro account. I'm now going to copy the code that I've prepared for this lecture and then I'll talk you through it. Here, we are simply checking that if the user selected the pro account subscription, all credit card fields in the payload must be non-null and non-empty or we return an error. If we restart the application and go through the pro sign up journey, the application should create an account as credit card number, you can enter the number 4242 four times, so as to have 16 digits. And for the card code, you can enter any three digits. We will end this lecture here by closing the Git flow workflow. 
First, we push our changes locally with the git commands git add star, git commit minus m added credit card fields and validation to the sanap form, and git push. Then, we merge to the develop branch with the git commands git checkout develop, git merge stripe, and finally git push. In the next lecture, we will be implementing the Stripe service and link it to the Sanap controller. Thank you for your time and I see you in the next lecture.